Uh, it's great to have you all with us. Uh, tonight's a special night for us. Uh, during the month of April, we get a chance to highlight the three professional schools at Boston College. The first of the three that we're highlighting and arguably the best, of course, that argument will probably be contended with the other two programs we talk about. So, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, well, tonight, we're gonna talk about the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Uh, the panel that I've assembled tonight uh, are students and faculty member uh, to talk a little bit about the philosophy, the programs, the interaction with faculty, um, the opportunities, the academic and outside of Boston College opportunities for the students that participate in programs in the Lynch School of Education. The Lynch School has been around since 1952. It was actually the first of the programs at Boston College to become co-ed, always innovative, always ahead of its time. Um, when I arrived at Boston College, it was back in 1999, and it was named for Peter and Carolyn Lynch, uh, who at the time gave us the biggest uh, monetary award we ever got, and really threw a lot of their support behind what we did in the Lynch School. And in my 22 years at BC, there's really no program that I've seen develop more and evolve more with the times and with the age than the Lynch School of Education. I certainly had preconceived notions when I got to Boston College and I was talking about what a school of education was about, but it would take just a simple look through our website or a simple conversation with any of our students and certainly our faculty to understand that it's not what you think it is. Uh, the, uh, studying education in the 21st century at an institution like Boston College takes on a lot of different meanings and a lot of different forms. Uh, so that's why we assembled the experts here tonight and we want to give information, but we also want to respond to your questions. So please feel free after a few minutes when we get started to send us some questions, send us some topics that we can talk about from the uh, uh, academic side, from the faculty side, or from the student experience side. But you found us correctly. If you, if you looked at our rankings, if you looked at where the Lynch School of Education stands nationwide, you're talking about the number one Catholic school of education in the United States. Pretty good choice you made uh, applying to us. And I like to think we made a good choice in admitting you. So tonight's about what, what are the things that would be in store for you if you made the choice to come to BC and join the Lynch School of Education. Uh, I'm gonna do the first introduction. And the first introduction is uh, Dr. Julia DeVoy. Uh, she, I wanna make sure I get the, the title right. She's the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Students and Studies in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. Uh, before we introduce the students, I should defer to the Dean. Uh, and, and Julie, if you can just give us a quick overview of the departments in the Lynch School. And I would love to hear from you in the leadership of the Lynch School. What's the philosophy? What are you trying to do? And, and how does that set us apart as a school of education with maybe some of the other choices that our viewers might have uh, to make this year? Absolutely. Um, and I, first, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. And um, I also want to thank the students and, and Chris and Stan for co-hosting this. Um, so as Chris said, I'm, I'm Julia Navoy, and I'm the undergraduate dean of students and programs in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. I had taught there for many, many years, and um, I was um, really honored to, to be you know, uh, asked to, to take on the undergraduate dean role. The Lynch School, and I think Chris also alluded to this before, the Lynch School is an incredibly innovative place, um, not just on the BC campus, but very much so in terms of ed schools across the country. And aside from being, you know, the number one Catholic ed school in the country, it's also, uh, I would say, one of the top schools of education in terms of its innovative mindset and it's programming at the undergrad level. So again, welcome and um, I, you made a really good choice. Um, so let me just give you kind of the, the view from 40,000 feet of what some of the undergrad options are in the Lynch School. And the students can also hop in too if they, if they wanna add the panel, the student panel. We actually have four majors now in the Lynch School. So um, a couple of years ago, it's about three years ago now, the school was renamed from the Lynch School of Education to the Lynch School of, of Education and Human Development. And that was, um, that was a very purposeful and reflective decision based on the fact that we had so many undergrads pursuing human development and psychology undergraduate. Um, majors and probably some of the folks on the panel today can speak to their experience in the program. So we have four now. We have the Applied Psychology and Human Development undergrad major. 
um, which is a 36 credit major, robust students in that major go into all kinds of opportunities, not just at BC, they, they, um, they double major, they major in minor with a lot of different areas on campus, depending on their interests. And they go into many, many careers based on that. They, they do, of course, go into psychology, human development, counseling, uh, programs like that, but a, a variety of other pathways. The second major that we have is a new one that actually launched just this, this past academic year. And it's called Transformational Educational Studies. And what we found was that a lot of Lynch School students were really interested in teaching and in educating, but they weren't necessarily sure that they wanted to go and fulfill those roles in a public system. And so they didn't necessarily need that licensing endorsement path, but they wanted to be prepared and they wanted to be next horizon thinkers in those areas. Um, so that's a new major that is, um, has proven to be incredibly popular. Students are going from that into um, working in nonprofit organizations, NGOs, international relations, community development. It's very flexible and um, it's, it's really a wonderful opportunity. Again, students double major with transformational studies and maybe environmental studies or international relations, all kinds of stuff over in the Morris College of Arts and Sciences. And they've been very happy. Um, the third major that we have is secondary ed. And some of you folks are, you're probably very much moved and um, found motivation in one of your high school teachers. And so a lot of times we have students that want to become high school teachers. And, and again, that was part of our original mission. So we have a secondary ed major where we'll put you on a pathway and in a major that uh, really moves you towards endorsement and usually history, English, chemistry, biology, math, a variety of subjects. And then our fourth and final major is we have an elementary ed major, which prepares you to teach elementary school. Um, both the secondary ed and the elementary ed uh, majors both have a double that's required with them. So if you're a secondary ed, you have to double in your subject area. And if you're an elementary, you can double in anything you want. Um, so you might be an elementary ed and a communications major or an elementary ed and a political science major. It's really, it's very wide open. Lynch School is probably one of the most um, flexible and, and I mean that in a very healthy, disciplined, robust way. We're one of the most flexible sets of majors and programs that I've seen at BC and I've been around since the middle of the 90s. So. It's been a long run. Um, I know Chris told me not to mention all of the minors, so I won't, but we have a lot of minors too that are open to Lynch School undergrads. Some of them, we have kind of three different categories. We have something called an open minor, which students from other BC undergrad schools can, can opt into and take at the Lynch School. We have closed minors, which are only for Lynch School students. And then we have hybrids that are kind of a, a little bit of both. Um, some of the new minors that are really um, very, very popular right now and, and, and for good reasons are uh, we have a design thinking and innovation minor, which uh, those tools can be pulled into really any field that you go into. And also we find students doing that minor and then using those kinds of processes and tools in projects that they're working on all across the university in different areas. We also have a, a restorative and transformational justice minor, which is really about um, uh, prison to education initiatives, um, obviously international and restorative transformational justice initiatives, and very mission fit with the Lynch School. Another one that we have that's new, um, and then I'll stop after four because we, we do have a couple of new ones. Um, we have a cyber strategy and design minor, which has been very, very um, interesting in that, as, as you all know from life in the pandemic, many, many of our experiences and our functions and our education and our work have moved into these digital realms. And so that minor in particular looks at like, what is the strategy of using technology and digital spaces 
in a formative and ethical way, um, which is really, again, this is BC, this is who we are. You can see I'm representing here. Um, and then finally, we have uh, another really, I think, very, very apropos and incredibly pragmatic minor that's new called MESA, Measurement, um, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment. And again, speaking about big data and the world, the, the world of education, the world of human development and psychology, and the world of really empowering other human beings including empowering and creating a meaningful and purposeful life for yourself has a, so many different branches in it right now. And I, I am constantly in contact with the folks in the Schiller Institute, School of Nursing, School of Business. Um, all of my undergrads can take minors over in the School of Business. Um, I have many that are doing a transformational studies major and a minor in marketing or a minor in accounting or leadership I would say the possibilities are um, not endless, but pretty close. And, uh, oh, I, we just created a new minor actually called um, Immigration and Humanitarian Studies. And that was based on the fact that undergrads wanted to, um, they really wanted to take that space and that, that set of like academic topics and develop a robust concentration in that area. So undergrads have a role in the future of the Lynch School too. Um, faculty are terrific. Some of them I've known since I was very young, um, which is a long time ago now. Some of them were in fact my own faculty. Um, so they have a very, um, a, a long and like, you know, important history in the Lynch School. And, um, their colleagues and they're wonderful and they love undergrads. So the two departments that have these majors are the teaching curriculum and society department and the counseling developmental and ed psychs department. The applied psych major is in council is under the counseling department's umbrella and the other three are under the teaching curriculum and society department. Um, and I am happy to take any questions. I'm happy to talk about anything else that you, you would like to hear more about. Um, oh, I'm also the director of the first year program. So every Lynch School student comes into the Lynch School and they participate in a year long academic program called Experience Reflection and Action. And it is a, it's, a, it's an actual course and it's based on the Jesuit um, pedagogical pillars of really thinking about our experiences, carefully reflecting, and then moving into what is the next right action What's the next right action for you, for the community you're working with, for the project you're working with, for the, the subject that you're gonna pursue. Um, and it's a very, um, it's considered a formative development program and I'm very proud of it. And so if you come to the Lynch School, you'll, you'll see me every week in class. So with that, I hand it off. Uh, Julia, that was excellent. That was an exciting introduction. Miners that have blown minds, I'm sure, of people that maybe only knew the tip of the iceberg of what was offered in the Lynch School. So thank you very much. And we'll be revisiting some of the things you spoke about, uh, both faculty and other opportunities. So thank you. Uh, so now let's meet some students. Uh, we have three seniors, a junior and a sophomore. Uh, and we're going to go with the seniors first because they're up late and they'll probably want to go to bed pretty soon. Uh, so I'm going to have the three seniors introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start with you, Helen. And uh, Helen, what I'd like you to do is say, say uh, you know, who you are and where you're from, uh, you know, what your major was. And Helen, when you finish your introduction, I want to know what you were looking for when you came to college. Um, did you find what you were looking for academically? Did it evolve? Did it take some time? Did it take people to find the space that you wanted to be in academically? So let us know what you're studying and how you got there. Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks so much, Chris. Uh, so hi, everyone. Welcome again um, to BC and, and to the Lynch School, especially. Um, my name is Helen. I am a senior uh, majoring in applied psychology and human development with a minor in leadership in higher education and community settings. And I'm originally from Wilmette, Illinois, which is a suburb just north of Chicago. Um, and then in terms of my academic career um, in the Lynch School, so I came into the Lynch School um, like as an incoming freshman. So I've been in, um, you know, since my first day at BC 
And I think what I've loved most about the Lynch School is its flexibility um, that Dean DeVoy was talking about, where, you know, I came in, I didn't really know what applied psychology was, and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, but then, you know, as I went through the applied psychology courses, um, you get a lot of exposure to different kind of facets and what you can do with the major. Um, so at first I thought I wanted to go into human resources. I did a summer internship in HR, um, decided it really wasn't for me. Um, and then I picked up the leadership and higher education minor and was thinking I might, you know, want to go into student affairs um, and took some courses in that. And then I realized, ah, I don't think that's for me either. Um, and so then the kind of the remainder of my, my coursework in applied psychology has been really figuring out, you know, what I want to do with the major. Um, and so as I, you know, transition to my postgrad kind of role, um, I am taking a little bit of a, a different approach and actually going into a, to a front end web design role, um, kind of working along that design thinking realm that, De that Dean DeVoy was talking about. Um, and so I think the Lynch School is definitely a really great place for you if you know you want to go into education, um, or even if you're not really sure, um, because the advising that I've received um, in the undergraduate advising offices and, you know, just the coursework, um, there are so many opportunities and applied psychology is so relevant in so many different fields. Um, so I think that that flexibility in the curriculum and kind of making my major kind of grow with me as I'm growing through BC um, has, has been my favorite part um, of the Lynch School. Fantastic. All right. You set the bar very high for the student introduction. So mm -hmm. uh, Laura, Kate, I'm going to turn to you. And after we find out who you are and where you're from and, and what you study, what I'd like to know is in the course of your time at BC, you're a senior and you've only got, unfortunately, you've only got a few more weeks here. I don't mean to rub it in. But can you tell everyone what the best choice you made? What, you know, Boston College students have to make a ton of decisions, what courses to take, what people to see. Can you talk about what your best decision was? Uh, maybe related to the Lynch School and to class or program or opportunity to get you to be as successful as you are as a senior. So again, after you introduce yourself, answer that question. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Laura Kate. Um, as Chris said, I'm a senior here at Boston College studying elementary education and applied psychology and human development. Um, so I'm a senior in my second semester, so I'm doing my full-time student teaching in fourth grade in Brookline, because um, as an elementary education major, you have a full practicum where you get to be in the classroom all day, every day for an entire semester. So I'm in the middle of that experience right now. Um, I'm from Chelmsford, Massachusetts. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. Um, and then as Chris was asking, I think a really good choice for me as a student here at Boston College was to get involved with the campus school. Um, so the campus school is a school here at BC. It's located on our campus, but it serves students ages three to 21 who have multiple disabilities and medical complexities. So it has students from about 28 surrounding districts, such as Needham, such as Chelmsford, my own hometown, and a lot of other towns around, um, bus their children here to the campus school. And as a freshman, I wanted to get involved in some sort of field experience. And I had a faculty member here in Lynch refer me to the campus school. And I started there as a work study student. So I was paid um, to work there five hours a week in the early elementary education classroom. So I got some really great hands on experiences in the field of special education. Um, and the campus school is a really, really unique aspect of Boston College, because, as I said, it's a fully functioning school on BC's campus. So as a teacher education major, I was able to from first semester freshman year, get involved in the school and get hands on experience from my first week as a student at BC. And I've been able to take this field experience with me every year through my Boston College experience. Um, and so that to me has been a really influential choice that I made as a freshman that has really kind of guided my outlook on life because I am now pursuing a master's degree in special education next year um, because of this field experience I was able to have at BC. Laura Kate, wonderful, two great introductions. Uh, and now looking at you, Megan, the third of the seniors, um, the bar is even higher, but Minnesotans never disappoint. So uh, I have a lot of confidence in you, Megan, here. And as you introduce yourself, uh, if you could talk a little bit about your four-year journey and what was the most challenging of the four years? I understand one of them had um, a pandemic in it. Uh, but if you could just talk about in terms of assessing where you are and what you wanted to be and what uh, your academic journey has been. What has been the, what, what year was the most challenging and, and what year got you through the most challenging year at Boston College? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, Minnesotans um, are the best, as he said, and I'm from Minnesota. Um, not saying I am, but I love my crowd. Um, and I'm from just outside of Minneapolis. 
and I'm a senior here at BC. I just like Helen and Laura Kate, I've been here in the Lynch School since when I was admitted. Um, I've always known I wanted to be a teacher and everything the Lynch School has done is verified that. Um, and I would say the hardest year of my four year journey, I think was maybe the second year. Um, we do in the Lynch School, we do practicums. And so as Laura Kate was saying, now I'm in my full practicum um, this semester as well. So I go every day, just the same hours as my teacher does. Um, but with the years leading up to that, you do three pre-practica, so you go once a week. Um, and I, I think the first year I did it was, well, I know the first year I did it was my sophomore year, but I think the first year was the most challenging just because it's this whole new thing. And um, I've known I wanted to be a teacher since the beginning, but I was pushed into this role and I felt almost like um, so I was stepping on my teacher's shoes a little bit. I was supposed to be the teacher in the role, but I also knew I, it, this was my first time even trying it out. So I knew it wasn't my expertise quite yet. And so I think there was definitely some transitioning right from the beginning and all throughout all the semesters. And here I am now. And it's interesting. I started the semester still kind of feeling like I was stepping on my teacher's toes and I was the student and I still am the student. I learn every day. Um, but I feel more like the teacher. And I think that's been a really awesome transition and growth for me. And I think the fact that for those of you that would like to be teachers too, the fact that Lynch has those three pre-practica is so awesome. And not very many other schools do that to quite the extent that Lynch does. Um, and it, it gives you something every year to practice and try and improve. And then next year, you're over here just a little bit and you can start from here and you practice and you grow and you improve. And, and I think I'll be improving all throughout my whole career experience, but I think I feel more confident now than I did that year. And, and I think that's really exciting. Great job, Megan. Thanks. Uh, all right. So now we go down to our junior representative and that's you Griffin. Uh, so Griffin, introduce yourself, who you are and, and where you're from. And uh, then I guess what I'd like to hear from you is because you're a junior and you're a little bit further away from leaving Boston College, thankfully, we get to have you around for a little bit longer. But have you started to learn the resources to help you along to the next step? Uh, are there people? Are there programs? What are the things that you are the conversations you started to have or the people you started to talk to or the programs you started to find to get you thinking about what's in store for you next. So let's hear a little bit about you and, and answer that question about, um, not that I'm trying to push you out the door, Griffin, but uh, what's ahead of you? What's in the journey ahead of you for the rest of your time at BC and then beyond? All right, so hi everyone, welcome. I'm Griffin Lawler, I'm a junior, as Chris said, I'm originally from Waldwick, New Jersey. Um, I'm studying applied psychology and human development. Um, and I have a double minor in history and in management and leadership. So I'm everywhere except the School of Nursing. Um, and what has pushed me along? Um, I think just being able to experiment with so many different things, um, both within the Lynch School and with extracurriculars like clubs and organizations. Um, I have appreciated the chance to um, do some very like hands-on learning and getting that experience. I started out as a secondary ed major. So I did my first pre-practicum at Brighton High School. And I loved that experience. When I first started, I was like, oh, I am going to teach. This is what I meant to do. And by the end, I realized that it wasn't for me, but I was really appreciative of that chance to learn that. And this semester, I'm actually in the applied psych practicum. So I'm an intern with BC's Human Resources Office, which has been another great chance to learn about that world outside that you're talking about. Um, and you're actually not gonna be able to push me out the door because uh, about a month ago, I submitted my application to the fifth year program for um, higher education. So hopefully I'll be spending one more year here at BC after my senior year. Um, and that decision was really spurred by um, just experiences I've had going on retreats, thanks to BC. And um, I'm in the Campus Activities Board, which is the main programming organization here on campus. And just getting to see how higher ed works in that way and seeing the joy that students have just being on campus, which has been so weird this year, but 
what I got to see before that and how we're learning this year to adjust with that um, has been really amazing and makes me want to stay in college forever. So that might be what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I, I like all the humble brags there, Griffin, about how important you are to campus. So thank you for that. We all knew, all of us who know you know how important you are to the day to day here. But one quick follow up. Um, you have minors in two areas, your major in the Lynch School. I can anticipate the questions. How can you do it? How can you still graduate? Well, ironically, you, you are going to be here for 50 years, but how can you get your undergraduate degree in four years? How does the calculus work to be able to get it all done? Yeah, so one thing is definitely ERA, which I believe Dean DeVoy touched on before. Um, you get some, and I don't know if I'm going to use the right words, but you do the credits work out somehow. I don't know. It's kind of like magic, honestly. I don't really know how it works. Um, but I don't even have to take a full schedule next year, I believe. Should probably check with my advisor on that. But um, I also took a summer class. There's a ton of um, summer classes offered, for huge variety, um, and definitely era. But I'll let Dean Hoy talk about that more really helped. And I did also, I have my history minor because I started, as I said, secondary ed with history. So I just decided to continue that. Uh, Dean DeVoy, do you mind jumping in real quick, just in terms of, there are a lot of students, I mean, I think it was uh, over 80 of the students uh, that graduated last year were double majors, it's countless more minors, double minors, just in terms of the, of the math to get everything done. Yeah. Uh, is it magic? Griffin, Griffin seems to think it's magic. I would think it's, it's something in between magic and shrewd course selection. So I used to, I used to dress up as Professor McGonagall for Halloween um, <laughs> because there is a little bit of magic involved. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, era helps a lot because you have these three credits that can really help you move ahead uh, in, in the the process of getting to your 120. Um, as Griffin said, there are a lot of summer courses now that students can take and that helps them get ahead a little bit too. But the real key is the advising model. The advising model that we have in the undergraduate dean's office, I have to give credit where credit is due. My colleagues, Maureen Raymond, and my colleague, Jill Pickner, who work in there full time with me, are two of just the greatest assets on the BC campus. Maureen does a plan, a, a four year plan that helps students to be able to go abroad. We have more students that go abroad from the Lynch School than any other ed school in the country. 33% of our Lynch School students, regardless of whether they're in the teaching ed majors and they have all these pracs, or not get an opportunity to go abroad. And that is 100% through advising and planning that occurs in the Office of Undergrad Programs. And then my colleague, Jill Pickner, um, she actually uh, helped, it was her brainchild to redesign the advising model in the Lynch School. She had come from some other you know, higher ed experiences in the past. And what we did is we actually, we brought all of the first year students under the advising umbrella of the undergraduate dean's office. So the entire first year, they're ours, you're, you're, you're working with us. And we really, we really set you up in a, in a process and in a path where you can maximize what you're doing at Boston College. You'll be able to um, you know, complete the Boston College core, which some of you might've read about or been thinking about. Um, which really gives you um, an array of different areas of, um, you know, academic exposure. Uh, you'll complete your major. And we set it up in a way where, you know, some of the students have already said it's incredibly flexible, but we have designed it such that we help you move through so that you, you it's flexible, but it's on target, it's on track. And if things get a little behind, we figure out a way to, to move you ahead. We, we figure out a way to pull you right back up to where you need to be. Um, and so that's also part of the, the beauty of the Lynch School is that we are one of the smaller schools. We're not the smallest. Nursing is the smallest with 400. The Lynch School is actually constantly getting bigger. We have um, 675 undergrads 
in the Lynch School. And because we are not, you know, the Morrissey College with thousands of students, which is a wonderfully big and exciting space, or the School of Management with many students as well, we, we really do get the chance to spend a lot of time with you individually. And the fact that we have you that entire first year in the ERA program and in our first year advising model, um, you, you get a set of tools that help you navigate BC in ways that are just special to the Lynch School model. It's an A plus model. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you, Julia. And thanks, Griffin. Uh, last but not least, Grace, I know you've been waiting patiently uh, as the youngest person on the panel, but if I read your bio correctly, uh, you're also a transformative education uh, student, correct? Yes, so I, I was am. really interested in having you join us because what I want to know is you, you coming to BC and we want to know who you are and, and where you're from, but like what's been the biggest surprise? What's, what has happened in just a short amount of time that you've been in the Lynch School, that you've been at BC? that you weren't prepared for or that's kind of rocked your world a little bit or that surprised you in the classroom. I'd like to hear sort of what's been the big surprise once we learn a little bit about you, Grace. Well, hi everyone, my name's Grace. I'm from Rumson, New Jersey and I'm a sophomore. So something that, oh, I'm majoring, like you said, in transformative educational studies and applied psychology with a concentration in the psychology of learning. Um, something that's been a, most surprising to me in my two years here has definitely been, I guess the obvious answer is COVID, but that really kind of threw for a loop how I was interacting in my classes and also how my experience has been. I was, did my, pro, I, before being a transformative educational studies major, I was doing my practicum for secondary ed. And so that was a challenge and not being able to have that in person. I was like, will this affect how my perspective for whether I want to be a teacher goes, but it ended up, it was just as helpful and it was just as great of an experience. It just was different in learning how classroom management was different and how you interacted with your teachers that you were shadowing under. Thanks, Grace, love it. Um, we, you've seen one faculty member uh, here and you've heard about um, the care that goes into advising and, and mentoring and, and fostering a good uh, atmosphere in the department. Um, Julia, I'd like to hear about a couple of other, your star faculty, the very uh, interesting, great group, the great teachers, the, the researchers. Uh, give us a couple of stars that you feel blessed to work with and you feel that Boston College it really has uh, a wonderful uh, situation uh, because a couple of these great uh, academics and teachers are with us in the Lynch School. Oh my gosh, that's so easy. Um, absolutely. So some of the real, you know, we have some really big heavy hitters. And in fact, some of the biggest names in um, counseling and education, our faculty at the Lynch School. Um, one of the people who is just consistently so kind and good and wonderful with undergrads and impressive is Dr. Susan Bruce, who is the, she's the chair of the teaching curriculum and society department. Um, so she would be one person that just stands out. Another person in that department is Chris Higgins, who really took took the lead with the transformative educational studies major. Um, he is wonderful, students love him. He does great research. Susan Bruce does great research. Susan actually designed and launched a master's in, in global studies um, that's been incredibly successful. She's very, very interested in the global educational uh, movement and programming. Some of the folks from the applied psychology department um, I would, I would say David Bluestein, who really, uh, he happened to be my dissertation chair years ago too, but he does some of the most incredible stuff on the future of work in, in society. Um, he's absolutely a star and also a lovely human being. Another colleague of mine um, in the applied psychology department, Jackie Lerner, she does a ton of work on positive youth development and, um, just 
has done a, a great deal of uh, advising and working with undergrads. She typically has undergrads in her class, um, you know, as teaching assistants, and she's just a an incredible mentor. She used to run um, the honors program in the Lynch School, um, but BC has no longer, we, we don't have honors programs at BC anymore, but Jackie's been incredibly involved with undergrads for years and years. Um, those are the two departments that really have undergrads in them. But I will say that the, the MESA department, Measurement, Evaluation, Statistics, and Assessment, they have a, that new minor. And so they're getting more and more involved with undergraduate courses and having undergraduates in their courses. And I would also, I would say, you know, uh, Mike Russell and, and Larry Ludlow, they're, they're just, there's so many wonderful people that it would be hard to just, you know, single out a few, but I can tell you that, um, the Lynch School is very, very interested in undergraduates, very focused on undergraduates. The faculty are in counseling and human development and education curriculum and society. So you can already tell from those, you know, those headings that they care about people. They care a great deal about people and um, undergraduates are incredibly near and dear to their hearts and their research is top notch. That's great. Thanks, Julia. Um, we do have time for some questions, so please feel free to use the Q&A and send a few in. Um, I wanted to see if we can get to as many as we can. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my two uh, student teachers, uh, Laura Cade and Megan. And Laura Cade, if you can answer the question about how you end up finding these places to teach at, what's the process? And then Megan, if you can answer the question when Laura Cade's done, who do you talk to after you have a bad day in the classroom? Uh, I have a fifth grader. And while she's wonderful, I could imagine her classmates could give people a hard time, not her, but in case she's listening. Um, so who, who are the people that you can help in terms of in terms of talking it out or kind of mentoring you through the, the challenges of being in a classroom? So if you guys can both uh, take a shot at each question. Sure. Um, so the Lynch School has a really great process for finding our placements. There's a whole office inside the Lynch School dedicated to practicum placements. Um, and they work with you all four years when you're at Boston College, or three years, I guess, because we start our practicum sophomore year. Um, so I did one pre-practicum sophomore year, one pre-practicum junior year, one fall senior year, and I'm doing my full practicum the spring of senior year. So you do three pre-pracs, which as Megan said, is once a week for 10 weeks, and then your full prac is all day, every day for 12 to 15 weeks. Um, and so the office of uh, placement, they place you basically, that's all they do is you get a little email and it says, Laura Kate, you were placed in Mr. Cohen's fifth grade classroom at Jackson Maine Elementary School, show up on this day at this time and he knows you're coming and he's excited to have you. Um, so that's the exact email I got when I was a sophomore about to do my first pre-practicum. Um, and so it was really low stress because I knew that BC had it all planned out for me. And I just showed up at the school and as I said, the teacher was expecting me, um, had plans for me and because of that relationship that BC has with a lot of the schools around here, um, I was able to just get there on the first day and jump right into the classroom. Um, and the process is a little bit different for your full practicum because you have a lot more of a choice. With your pre prax BC really tries to get you into as many different environments as possible. So I worked in two urban districts, well, both Boston public schools, but two urban placements and then a suburban placement for my three pre pracs And then for my full prac, I had a choice of where I wanted to be, what grade level I wanted to be in as well. Um, so some students go back to teachers that they were with for pre prac and continue with this teacher on for their full prac. I did not do that. I got a brand new teacher in a brand new school um, because I really wanted, my priority this semester was to be somewhere that was gonna have an in-person component. And a lot of my Boston public school placements were still all virtual. So I reached out to Lynch and I said, here's the deal. I really want to be in person next semester. Can you make this work for me? And they did, they found me a really great mentor teacher um, that I've been working with all semester. So as I said, BC really takes care of it for you. You have a much more of a say when you do your full-time student teaching because for your pre-prax, they really want you to get as much experience in a variety of settings as possible. And they realize by the time you're at your full prac, you have those experiences and you're ready to make the choice for yourself. And Laura Kate, a couple of questions came in as you were speaking about like, what else do you do when you're in your full prac? Like, are you taking a bunch of other classes? What are your other academic expectations while you're doing your full practicum? 
Yes, so the full practicum is 12 credits. And then you take a three credit inquiry seminar that's on top of that. So that meets once a week. Um, me and Megan's inquiry seminar is Tuesdays from 4.30 to 6.50. So it's about a two and a half hour class. And all the assignments for that class go along with your full practicum. So the senior inquiry is kind of like a capstone course, a course to close out your time at BC and really forces you to reflect upon your full practicum experience. Um, so you get to choose a project and you get to implement this project into your full practicum. So for example, I'm examining the question, how do students' ability to make text to self connections change when they're presented with read alouds from cultures other than their own? So I chose this question myself. People have different questions. I think Megan's is kind of similar as well. Hers is about activism in the classroom. And so I chose this question because it's something that was really interesting to me. And my requirements for this course is that I teach three lessons about it and analyze the data. So it's very hand in hand with the full practicum experience. So even though it is, you know, this extra three credit course and the two and a half hour class time, it doesn't feel like too much uh, more of a workload because it's something that I'm implementing in the classroom, which I'm going to every day. And then in addition to that, I'm also taking a graduate course as well, which is an additional two and a half hours of class time um, to help me kind of get a kickstart into my master's program, which I can talk about a little bit later if you want me to go into the graduate, but that's a whole nother um, section that's more of a graduate, not the undergrad lunch thing. But so yeah, I have the full practicum and then I have these two classes on top of it. And I'd say most of my energy this semester is very much focused on my full practicum. I'm getting up very early every day and exhausted when I get home, but it's also so rewarding and so much fun. And just really, I believe that to teach, you have to be in the classroom. And this is just the best way to learn to grow as a teacher. So I'm really happy that Lynch requires that as part of our program and as part of the way to get licensed as a teacher. Uh, Megan, she, she covered a lot of that, but if you could just mm -hmm. talk a little bit about, again, maybe the personal connection that you make, especially as uh, doing a full prac, being in the classroom, um, I'm sure that there are tougher times and it must be, must be an opportunity for you to either vent or just talk out loud about what it is that you uh, encountered. Yeah, I think, I do feel, as you were saying, when you have a bad day, who do you reach out to? And I, I feel very supported by the Lynch School. Um, I think generally the idea of going into my practicum every day is so awesome. I loved going in once a week in previous semesters. And now when I mess up or I do something I wish I did differently, I reflect upon it. I'm like, really, I wish I would have you know, had the students interact with each other more today. Or I really wish I would have said this a little different this morning. I just come in tomorrow and I fix it. And so I think it's so cool because it's such a, a life model you're going with. In real life, you are gonna go in every day and you're gonna think about what you did today and you're gonna go back and do something a little different tomorrow. And I think it's cool to teach the kids that. I say all the time, oh, I made a mistake. Here's what I'm gonna do to fix it. And they're getting the language to say, oh, I made a mistake today and here are my steps forward too. Um, and with that, there are harder days. You know, students can be difficult sometimes. I can be hard on myself if I did something I wish I did differently. Um, and I do feel so supported by the Lynch School. One of the reason, well, I would say my biggest resource is my peers. My peers are awesome. And Laura Kate is actually one of my very best friends here at BC and she's in all of my elementary ed classes. Um, and we walk into our sen senior inquiry every Tuesday and we spend 30 minutes talking about our rose for the day, our thorn for the day. So the positive thing that happened today, the, the more negative hard thing that happened today and then our bud, something we're excited about, something that's coming up. And we spend 30 minutes doing that. And our, our teacher facilitates that, our professor, she's awesome too. She says, you know, here's my rose, here's my thorn and here's my bud and what's yours. And so we write it down, we talk with each other and a lot of cool conversations come out of it. We've talked a lot about, um, we've talked a lot about teaching for social justice in those conversations. We've talked a lot about collaborating with our teachers, um, uh, self-care for ourselves, how to talk in professional settings in the classroom now that we're starting to do that. And I've learned so much just by hearing what my peers have to say. Um, and I feel so supported by hearing my peers say, hey, I made a mistake too today and here's how I fixed it. And maybe you wanna try that too. So it's been a really awesome experience to have that. Megan, that was great. Thank you. And thanks both of you. Um, 
Helen Fagan, one uh, thing I always will remember about you is uh, how much you looked forward to your study abroad experience and what you got out of it, even though it was curtailed a little bit and changed a little bit on the fly. Um, but I'd like to know how much of it was uh, a direct uh, offshoot of what it is that you were studying and being a part of the Lynch School and how maybe the things that you picked up uh, along the way of your journey uh, uh, in another continent far away uh, have been a part of you as you came back and you know finished your career in the Lynch School. So uh, everyone wants to study abroad, it seems like. The Lynch School is one of these places where a, a, a lot of students try to put that into their curriculum. Was that a problem for you? Uh, can you talk a little bit about your planning, your choice to study abroad, and sort of what you took from it and, and how, it's a, how it's been a, an assist to you now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I know we touched on this a little bit, um, but like I cannot emphasize enough the advising that happens in the Lynch School. Um, there's this one kind of room that it happens in, the Campion Hall room 104. Um, you know, the students just colloquially call it, oh, 104, Dean DeVoy works there. Um, and they are just incredible. Um, so I actually studied abroad in Kampala, Uganda, my junior spring. Um, so it did get cut short. Um, and, but I basically went in, I wanted to do something really non-traditional. Um, and so I went in to speak with Maureen Raymond and said, hey, like I want to study abroad in Uganda. Like, how do I make this happen? Um, and she worked with me to plan out my schedule. Um, I actually um, was supposed to be getting, you know, some applied psychology credit for that. Um, I was actually, you know, supposed to do an applied psychology practicum there and do actual field research um, on the ground. Um, and so definitely there are opportunities to kind of, you know, uh, continue to grow in your applied psych studies um, abroad if you want. Um, and then they kind of planned that all out for me. Um, I did end up actually, you know, coming home and cutting my semester a little bit short, um, which again, I like leaned on the advising office in Campion 104 so much. They were able to, you know, really kind of orient my schedule to make sure I was graduating on time and getting all the credits I need. Um, and they, and also just so, so helpful in terms of a kind of like social and emotional uh, perspective. Like this was right when COVID was hitting, everybody was really stressed and they were just so kind and were like, no, like we'll figure it out. You're going to, you're going to graduate in 2021. It's going to be okay. Um, and so just hearing that also was just incredible. Um, and I think, you know, generally like Boston College as an institution is really social justice focused and mission driven. Um, but I think that's especially really seen in the Lynch School. Um, and so opportunities to, you know, go abroad. I was also supposed to do a kind of a service placement abroad um, through this uh, other fellowship program that BC offers called the McGillicuddy Logue Fellows. Um, and so, you know, Boston College or the Lynch School of really kind of enabled me to do that. And then also I have taken the lessons that I did learn from, you know, my short time in Uganda um, and kind of put them into my classes. Um, and you, we have a lot of discussions about, you know, what is education like, um, you know, in the United States in like different, in an urban setting versus a suburban setting, but also what is it like globally? Um, and we do have a lot of these global conversations in our classes. Um, and so being able to take like, you know, what I did learn from Uganda um, in, you know, that, that short time has been really, really transformative for me. Um, and the advising that I received and the support um, from the university was just like, just incredible and like ex exactly what I needed during that time. Helen, what a wonderful answer. I mean, I had notes that I, I mean, that was so much better than the notes that I had about those subjects, Helen, that was wonderful, thank you. Um, and I know how much that experience meant to you, even though it was cut short. Um, uh, Griffin, I'm gonna turn to you a little bit and you kind of led me to this question by talking about some of the things that you do extracurricularly. And I think a lot of people, when they take on, you know, these majors that are, might be, you know, uh, majors that involve a lot of themselves and a lot of deep thinking, worry about the the balance between student life and academics um, you know are you spending a lot of time are you pulling all-nighters are, are there a lot of meetings are you pouring a lot of time into the academic climate um, can you balance that with some of the things that you want to do socially some of the other expectations that you have in the community how is your sort of work to life balance uh, specifically in Lynch School but just generally at Boston College I personally have not had too many problems with my work-life balance. Um, specifically for the Lynch School, the professors are so understanding and they know that you are a young student, especially your freshman year when you're just adjusting to college life. They're incredibly understanding and supportive. Um, and then in regards to all the extracurriculars, 
Um, you know, there's student run programs. So everyone you're working with is also understanding and the people in those offices, the office of student involvement is so great to work with. Um, they're really fun people and they're always willing to offer, they're always offering their support um, for you in the clubs and just as a person as well, uh, which I have always loved. And it can be a lot sometimes, you know, I'll be honest, it, there, there's tough weeks where you have a lot of assignments due and you might have some event you're supposed to run or go to. Um, but it's so important to just remember that you're here to learn in your classes, but also to learn from your experiences. And, you know, there's so many things offered here at BC that freshman year, I was like, I really need to take advantage of this. I heard, um, I went to this talk from a former US spy. I went and saw um, different authors and I'm so glad that I did that because not only did it give me a break, but they were also still learning experiences. It didn't have anything to do with my classes, but I learned a lot from them and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and Grace, again, uh, turning to you as someone who's you know, not even halfway through your career yet at, at Boston College, I think a lot of people wanna know about sort of, do you know a lot of the students in your grade in the Lynch School? Are a lot of your friends in the Lynch School? Is that how you made your social network and connections? or through the core curriculum or just to the residence hall? Are your friends just like this random assortment of people all over? Or because there's only maybe 150, 160 students in Lynch School that are sophomores, do you know a lot of them? Do you do things with them? Do, you, do they just sort of gravitate with each other and you become very friendly with them? So I'd like to know, do you know a lot of your classmates that are specifically in the Lynch School? And do you know a lot of other people? And how did you get to know these other people? Yeah. So. I actually, some of my best friends actually came from the first year experience era where I met them first day of school and then just from there had familiar classes and got to know each other. Some of us lived in the same building and since then they've been some of my best friends. So era was definitely a great place because it created that small, I know we keep talking about it, but it created that small or environment within a small environment and you became super comfortable with people, you had projects with people and it really just built, set the foundation for such great relationships with people. And I think also just Lynch in general, being a smaller um, school and those classes through the core curriculum, you take the same classes and get to know people because it also has a lot of group projects I've found, which has really helped me in getting to know people and how I've become better friends with people. And then outside of that, I've actually met some of my best friends through housing. And just I, as a freshman, I lived on Newton and my best friends and roommates now lived right across the hall from me. And also just getting involved in some clubs or intramurals was a great way of building relationships with people. Fantastic. Thanks, Grace. I mean, I knew you were, you were very popular and, and friendly, so I <laughs> never doubted that you had a lot of friends. I just wanted to know if, if through the Lynch School you found a lot of friends. That's, uh, that's, that was the big thing. Uh, well, our time is getting close to the end, and there are a couple of questions that are in the Q&A that I wanted to make sure they co we cover them. And I wanted to make sure, and, and again, it might be um, under the Dean's uh, jurisdiction in terms of, uh, you know, um, Dean DeVoy, what, what do you envision uh, career paths, um, popular places to do internships for students that would be interested in the, you know, human services area or the transformative educational uh, program? So what's really, what's really nice is that that applied psychology and human development and the transformational educational studies major are so there's there's depth but there's also this breadth to them and that you may be somebody who is actually going out and designing new learning environments in digital spaces and be a transformational educational studies major and thus doing an internship in that sort of a setting um, you may be a human development and psychology person that is um that's doing women's empowerment 
in a global setting. So um, you may do a practicum in another part of the world. Somebody asked that in the chat. You can do an internship in a prac, um, both abroad and in other parts of the US, and it will count for credit for you. Um, a lot of students in both of those majors are really looking to go into, and I think I said this a little bit at the beginning, they're looking to do um, leadership in international organizations, in NGOs, in nonprofits, here and otherwise. They're looking to do community engagement, community advocacy. Some of them are going and working in government. They're doing policy and, um, and advocacy work at the government level. And many, many of them actually are going out into business. Um, I have to say that the, a, a huge number of Lynch School undergrads actually land in a variety of private industry business careers. Some of them are doing consumer marketing. Some of them are doing um, you know, human capital and human resources stuff. Um, and they're just, they're just everywhere. That's the thing. So because they're everywhere, the internships are uh, wider and wider and wider. And, um, you know, the Lynch School does a great job of, of sort of giving these opportunities and they're only getting better at it. So um, there's just, there's a wide path ahead for students that want to come in and do, uh, do those kinds of things or are just not sure what they want to do. Um, part of formative education is as finding what gives you meaning and purpose, you know, what are your gifts and, and what does the world need you to do with those gifts, right? Those are some of the questions. And I personally, I am obviously biased about the lunch school, um, but I will say I, I also have an MBA. So I, I, I have a business sort of lens and background too. I think that the students in the Lynch School are, are going out and doing some of the most important work across industries that I have ever seen. So that's my, that's my 50 cents. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, that's probably worth a little bit more than 50 cents. Um, so, but thank you. Um, so as we wrap things up, first of all, I'm gonna wrap things up slowly. So students can put their email addresses in the chat. Um, uh, and Dean DeVoy, you could do that as well, if you'd like yeah. to, just to keep the conversations going with the people that are viewing. Um, we try to get to all the questions, but some like someone had a really uh, specific question for Helen. Um, you know, let's keep the conversations going and let's keep talking about opportunities and reflections and observations about the Lynch School. Um, but the, but the one question that jumped out at me and maybe this is a good place to finish would be, um, how have you guys become better? Uh, Dean Devoy just pontificated beautifully about what the what the plan is for you. Um, but let's talk to you guys. And, and, you know, it's tough to ask a sophomore and a junior, you know, you, I, I feel like a senior, I, I, you know, it's mean to ask a sophomore about how Boston College has changed their life. I don't mind asking seniors because they'll be out of here in a month. I don't mind being a little bit mean to them. Have you guys reflected in the very Jesuit Ignatian way? Have you reflected on how BC has made you better? Or specifically, like, like um, Dean DeVoy said, anything about the Lynch School that's made you better? I think that's a great question. Any quick reflections on that to, to my three seniors? Yeah, I can start that out. I think, I know we've talked a lot about the first year experience class, experience, reflection and action era. Um, but I think what I've done, you didn't just, I, we didn't just do it in era. We experienced, we reflected and we acted in every one of my lunch classes we had. And so I think I really, began to internalize that idea. Um, I went out and I took some risks and I decided to do a little more and make myself uncomfortable. I experienced and I come back home every day and I reflect on what my day was like, how I was in my day, how I interacted with others. Um, and then I act again tomorrow. So I decided I can't change the world overnight, but I'm going to act again tomorrow and be a little better. And so I think I've taken that into my teaching but I think I've also taken that into my personal life. And so that's how Boston College and the Lynch School has changed me. Great answer, Megan. Uh, either one of you are welcome to add or uh, if you'd like. 
Yeah, um, I can speak like just specifically to the applied psychology major um, in kind of as I'm looking to exit Boston College and moving into this wider world. This question that I'm getting all the time is, you know, what is applied psychology and human development? Why is this your major? You know, what are you going to do with that? And like there are, as we talked about, so many different career paths that you can go in with the applied psychology major. Um, but I think that the really the most important thing about the major and what really makes the Lynch School special in my eyes is that the applied psychology major not only you know taught me so much about psychology theory and interpersonal relations and if you want to go into counseling it prepares you for that and human resources um, but it just teaches you all these life skills about how to build relationships and be like a good citizen of the world um, you know how to you know interact with with all different kinds of people one-on-one -on -one. you also learn about like systemic oppression and you know things that are happening in our greater society and how that affects you developmentally um, I just feel so equipped to you know kind of enter into any new situation that I like, encounter in kind of my greater life, um, knowing that I have these life skills in my backpack, all those soft skills that, you know, you can't, that you don't normally learn in the classroom, like how to be like a good speaker and, you know, communicator and writer and friend, um, which I think, you know, are some of the most important skills that you, anyone could learn. Um, I think, think that the Lynch School really drills those home and really you know, teaches you how to be a better, you know, intellectual human, but also just generally how to be a better person. Um, and that's what it is what I think is so, so special about the Lynch School and definitely, you know, what I'm going to miss uh, when I graduate in a month, as you, as you said, Chris. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I'll add on to that. Um, I think something that's really special about the Lynch School and what's impacted me a lot is its focus on social justice. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to be a teacher from the time I was a preschooler, I've always wanted to be a teacher. And I just thought I wanted to be a teacher because I liked working with kids. And then it wasn't until I got to lunch school and started taking this coursework and having these practical experiences that I finally gained the vocabulary and the thought processes that let me know like why I actually want to be a teacher. Like I've learned that I truly believe that education is completely foundational to society. And I think that everything starts from infancy, early childhood, elementary education, so foundational for every student. And as a teacher, I want to get into these kids. I want to work with these students in such, you know, this malleable part of their life. And this is when you can really start to teach for social justice. Like the senior inquiry class that I was telling you about earlier, this project I, I had to choose, every single assignment, I have to write a paragraph about how does this show that I'm teaching for social justice? Every lesson plan that I write, how is this helping social justice, what are you teaching your kids? How are you making sure that education is equi equitable, that I'm reaching all students in all ability levels, all language, linguistic levels, every need is being met in the best possible way. And I think that BC through the coursework and through the practicum experiences have really you know, given me this passion and this vocabulary and the skill set to go off into the world. I'm confident that next year, you know, I'm not gonna be a perfect teacher ever, but I have, confidence I have passion and I'm willing to work and to grow and to give my life to you know pushing the social justice through education I mean how great is this um you know for 60 something minutes we've talked about this wonderful opportunity and how um all of you uh have in, enriched BC with what your talents and skills are and how you're going to make a big difference for when you get out there after you graduate some sooner than others um, I really appreciate it. Griffin, Grace, Helen, Laura, Kate, Megan, uh, and, and Dean DeVoy. Um, this conversation has been wonderful. I think our viewers walk away here knowing volumes about not just Lynch School, not just about Boston College, but about college and what college should be about. Um, I think this was very impressive. And I thank you guys for the candor, the information, and the willingness to keep the conversation going. So thanks very much. You guys did a great, great job. And for those of you viewing, uh, thanks for staying, uh, staying up for, with us. We do have programs throughout the, the uh, month of April to help you with your decision. Um, no pressure, but you've got 23 days. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, but in all seriousness, I hope this was the kind of information that would help you understand what kind of things can happen to you at Boston College and specifically in the Lynch School. Thanks for joining us. Keep the conversations going if you can. Have a good night. Take you tell if you need anything. Bye.